Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs. Today we are looking at the Nether snapshots once again. We are getting closer and closer to the release of Minecraft 1.16, the Nether update, and today we have a lot to talk about. There are new biomes, there are new mobs, there is a whole bunch of stuff added to the Nether. There is even some new music, which I am very excited to talk to you guys about. But first of all, we need to catch up on a couple of updates that I skipped over in the last couple of weeks because they didn't add a huge amount. It wasn't enough really to fill up a video, but this latest update, Snapshot 20W15A, has introduced a bunch of new features that I want to cover with you guys. So let's start off by looking back at a couple of the snapshots that have come out over the previous weeks and the new additions we can find here in the nether. And we're going to start off with a brand new revolution in nether transport in the form of these wonderful little guys. These are called striders and they are a new mob allowing you to travel across the nether lava lake. So rather than include boats in the nether, Mojang have decided to include a new mob which is actually attracted to warped fungus. As you can see, they stride on over basically as soon as you have warped fungus held out in front of them and they really like being in lava to the point where if they walk up onto land, they will turn purple as if they are cold and begin to shiver. So these things are definitely happier off in the lava lakes. They can be bred much like other passive mobs and in this case, we're going to saddle one up and use it for some transport with this brand new item, Warped Fungus on a Stick, made as you would expect by combining some Warped Fungus with a fishing rod. Now once you saddle these things up, they've been through a couple of changes, they are generally pretty fast to cross the lava lakes, and not only that, but you can right click with the stick to have them go even faster in much the same way as you boost the speed of a pig that you're riding in the overworld. Once they pick up a turn of speed, these things are pretty fast, and I can see them being used to cross lava lakes without worrying about ghasts or any skeletons firing at you from the nearby soul sand valley biomes. These things are really, really nice, and to be honest, I find them pretty adorable. They look a little bit like Baby Yoda to me with the kind of wispy hair on the sides. I like that a lot. I do feel really sad for them if they end up on the shore, though, and they definitely move a lot less fast on ground than they do in the lava. So you'll want to keep one of these in the nether and have it wandering around in its natural habitat. Of course, once you get towards the shore, you can just hop off, and if you're close enough, you won't immediately drop straight into the lava and get set on fire. If you you have a whole bunch of them, they also make some pretty adorable croaking noises. Just take a listen. Another addition from a recent snapshot mob-wise is one of these. No, wait, that's a regular hoglin. Uh, be right back. That's more like it. Yes, once a hoglin travels through to the overworld, whether through a player's nether portal or transported by the player, much like their piglin counterparts, they begin to shake a little bit until the violent transformation occurs and they become a zoglin. These zoglins are effectively zombified hoglins in much the same way that piglins zombify into pigmen in the overworld and these guys are kind of infected with a bit of rage by traveling into the overworld and they will indiscriminately attack basically anything they can get their hands on. Will they attack this squid? They will certainly try. <laughs> There we go, brand new squid farm design, get the zoglins to farm them for you. And zoglins have separate spawn eggs and they can basically be used in kind of a similar way to the Johnny Vindicator easter egg, where if you put them near a group of mobs, they will attack them without fail. And while the mobs might have a little bit more room to maneuver, the zoglin will go about attacking anything and everything it sees, including hostile mobs. They will even go ahead and attack their zombie brethren, which is pretty bold of them, and they might get a couple of hits in exchange, but yeah, the uh, the Zoglins are basically enraged by the overworld and will attack nearly everything, with the exception, I believe, of creepers, because aggroing creepers, as we all know, is a bit of a bad idea, and you won't find a Zoglin deciding to leave giant craters in your overworld. So luckily, snow golems are still the only thing that will aggro a creeper and cause it to explode, except for maybe a stray shot from a skeleton's bow. And while the Zoglins will of course only drop rotten flesh when killed, I still think those might be an interesting addition to any kind of passive mob farm, and from what I can tell, they don't seem to take drowning damage either. Anyway, let's get back to the nether and introduce the new biome that we saw briefly in the introduction to this video. This right here is a basalt delta. You'll notice the biome fog changes to this distant bluish grey 
ash falls around us as though it is snowing and basalt columns spring up from both the lava lakes and from the terrain around you almost like the giant's causeway that you'll find in uh, in Scotland and Ireland this kind of volcanic basalt formations like this they are absolutely beautiful and I'm a big fan of them not only that but I'm a very big fan of what we have down here this is blackstone it's kind of a variant of basalt that occurs in these patches around here and blackstone is available in a variety of forms it's basically a brand new building block similar to overworld stone and stone bricks if we go into the building blocks section here you will see there are a bunch of different variants of it down here starting with regular blackstone having slabs stairs and walls there is a gilded blackstone that is gotten by combining it with bits and pieces of gold and we can take a look at what that looks like mixed in here as well that is frankly looking pretty cool i wonder if the piglins have any interest in it it seems like they do <laughs> so that's kind of cool piglins by the way have a couple more things added to their bartering menu which i'm sure we will get in a second did he just take that without giving me anything how rude <laughs> but anyway back to the blackstone it also comes in polished variants through crafting we end up with a polished blackstone kind of similar to polished andesite which once again comes in stair slab and wall forms we also get a stone brick variant of blackstone like this polished blackstone bricks looking very very moody i can imagine those being used in castles castle roofs wizard towers basically we are looking at mordor in minecraft right here which is a very exciting thing and we also have chiseled polished blackstone and cracked blackstone brick variants this one here has a snout kind of design on the side of it which looks very appropriate for the piglins that we now found roaming the nether and the cracked blackstone bricks look just like cracked stone bricks but the blackstone variant on them and i'm really looking forward to seeing if these eventually make an appearance in the piglin bastions that have been mentioned in previous change logs but blackstone is already one of my new favorite blocks we have been needing a stair and slab variant in a black kind of color palette for a while and while i think the texture might be a little bit too heavy i would really prefer if the texture was a little bit more muted it certainly blends super well with the basalt when found naturally here in the nether in fact if you put basalt cobblestone and blackstone together they actually have a really cool gradient of the top textures if i take away some of the material from around here and just show you that in the context of something neutral let's put grass around it which seems like a weird kind of option for the nether but take a look at how well those textures tile together and that is a really really nice gradient unfortunately the side textures don't really do that so much they don't tend to have quite as smooth a transition as the tops do and while basalt is directional blackstone is not so we can kind of see that being used sparingly here and there but the fact it has stairs and slabs and all of these other variants for it is very very good news to me but perhaps the coolest thing about blackstone is it can be used as a substitute for stone in recipes that require it so not only can you make furnaces and other blocks like that you might even be able to craft droppers and dispensers with it but you can use it to make a stone pickaxe it will not appear as a blackstone pickaxe in your inventory but it will be functionally the same and that basically removes the need to go back to the overworld for stone in the progression of tools meaning that if you started a survival let's play in the nether you could get to a pretty high tier of tools just with the materials around you you can get wood stone and gold all in the nether now and potentially barter with piglins to get yourself something else now it isn't going to be possible to find stuff like iron here in the nether unless you bring in a villager for some trading or the piglins end up bartering it one of these days but once you've done a little bit of digging around to find netherites you could hop back through to the overworld get yourself some iron and some diamonds and then come back to the nether with netherite tools and never leave again <laughs> if you had enough access to blackstone you could basically produce as many stone things as you wanted to and at this point i don't think there is a way of generating blackstone in the same way that you could create stone in the overworld but basalt generators were recently added in the form of being able to hook up blue ice and lava together to generate basalt so maybe that functionality will be added to blackstone and that will be a way that you can produce blackstone permanently in the nether instead of having to tear apart these biomes i mentioned that the piglins might have some new barters for us in this update and that comes in the form of a piglin banner pattern which once again very much has that snouty look to it much like the uh blackstone chiseled polished 
Whatever they are. Chiseled, polished black stone. There it is. Yeah, bricks doesn't even enter into it. Chiseled, polished black stone has the same kind of thing. And to be honest, that could look like the eyes of something as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be a snout. You can imagine some kind of 8-bit creature to it, but it definitely has that kind of piglin brand to the entire thing, which, yeah, I like that. And I'm hoping that potentially we see some of these flags flying over piglin bastions if they get implemented in a future update. And there are more building blocks for them to use too, because they're there are now cracked and chiseled variants of nether bricks to add to the regular nether brick blocks. This is the cracked variant, and this here is the chiseled variant, the kind of skull there, maybe representing the skeletons and wither skeletons that you will find in a nether fortress. And the cracks are even in different places to cracked stone bricks, so you see a little bit of textural variation going in here. Really great work. I think this is a really cool addition, and I still absolutely love the sound effects that nether bricks produce now and as you'll see from a quick look around one of these biomes magma cubes spawn here in large numbers and in fact as far as i can tell with the exception maybe of a few zombie piglins and piglins who wander in from nether waste biomes adjoining them nothing else seems to spawn in these basalt deltas you tend to just find magma cubes here which is going to be great for farming and potentially good for other nether mob spawn rates elsewhere in the nether if you only have a few magma cubes taking up the mob cap here now if you are out here exploring the basalt deltas and you feel like laying some campfires well consider the brand new soul fire campfires which have been added and presumably are just crafted with soul fire torches instead of regular torches providing that blue flame and I expect they will do the same job of scaring away piglins that the soulfire torches and soulfire blocks itself will have done. So let's see if we can find a piglin here. And yep, looks like he is. I mean, for a start, he's scared of the zombified piglins, but I think he's probably going to be scared of that soulfire campfire as well. Yep, he does seem to be running away from that, so that's a pretty surefire tell that soulfire campfires work basically the same way as soulfire torches and soulfire itself. Now there are a couple of other small changes that have been added in recent updates, a couple of technical changes, a few things like dispensers now being able to dispense saddles onto mounted mobs like horses and pigs, that kind of stuff. All of that is in the change logs on minecraft.net which you can read, but for today I thought I would take a look at the new music that has been added in the nether. There are three new tracks composed by a new composer, Lena Rain, who has not previously I believe composed any music for Minecraft, and these tracks play in various biomes in the nether. So I'm just going to let a few samples of those play while you take a look at the new nether landscape here, and just take in the ambience and the beauty of what Lena has composed.
And this is the first new music we've had in Minecraft since the 1.13 update, the update Aquatic, and I think they've done a fantastic job of getting it to fit the ambience of the nether now. It feels like something new, which the nether really does feel like right now, but I think the melody and stuff that Lena is using and the different kind of ambient soundscapes feel so much more in the spirit of C418's music. I really think it's a brilliant addition to the game, and I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the nether update snapshots that we have so far. Hopefully 1.16 is that little bit closer to completion. I'm sure there are still a few more features on the horizon, and I look forward to sharing those with you. But for now, that's going to be it for this episode. We're going to take a look at future nether snapshots, of course. But in the meantime, don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.